everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've got a new WD MyCloud product to check out. This is the WD MyCloud Mirror, and this is a two-drive network attached storage array, and the folks from WD sent this to the show to review. Uh, this is almost identical to their enterprise level EX2 drive, except it's missing just like one or two features, but everything else is almost identical down to the processor, memory, even the hard drives installed are actually their higher quality red drives, which I'll show you in a minute. So I, I actually think if you're in the market for the EX2, you might want to look at this. It's a little bit less expensive, about $40 less. Uh, and it's only missing like iSCSI and a couple of other features that are really not all that necessary. Now inside the device are two hard drives and they make it pretty easy to uh, swap the drives out. So you have a little uh, thing here, you can just turn this little uh, screw and it's got a little uh, knob there that you can turn and you pull off this plate here and inside uh, you'll see the two WD red drives. Now I have the, uh, the four terabyte model which consists of two uh, two terabyte red drives. And the red drives from WD are their higher end uh, drives that are designed for these kinds of devices, for network attached storage dr uh, drives. So they're a little bit more reliable than perhaps the green drives, which are their lesser expensive drives. So again, this is uh, what the, uh, the EX2 comes packaged with. Uh, this consumer version also has uh, the higher end drives on board, which is uh, very nice. And it's got a nice little uh, case here as well. On the back, you have a gigabit ethernet adapter, uh, two USB 3.0 ports. And what you can do with these is uh, attach external drives to the device and access them over your network through uh, this device. And I've covered that in my WD MyCloud review about how all that stuff works. So we're not going to go into too much repetitive detail today, but uh, you can check out that video to see what's there. Uh, then there's a power adapter. Now, just like the WD MyCloud drive, uh, this device will not directly connect to your computer. You need to plug it in uh, via the gigabit ethernet port on the back to your network and connect to it that way. So uh, that is how it works. So what we're gonna do is a couple of things. I'm gonna compare this to the WD MyCloud, which is the single drive device that we've covered in extensive detail. And I'm also going to compare it to the EX2. Now I haven't reviewed the EX2, but I did review the EX4, which is actually the same product pretty much as the EX2. It just has two, uh, two more drives than the EX2 does. So I'll kind of compare it to both so you can get a sense as to which one might be right for you. So let's plug this thing in and take a look. All right, our drive is up and running. It didn't take all that long to get going. We have it connected via gigabit ethernet. And like the other MyCloud products, it's very easy to configure. And really by default, uh, it'll show up on your network right, right away. And as you can see here, we've got the WD MyCloud mirror and some of the folders that we can access on that device. And it'll show up on uh, Mac or Windows. They also have a web-based control panel, just like the other uh, MyCloud products have. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the original MyCloud. You just have a few new things like this network activity and CPU monitor. And again, this is something that the EX2 also has. Uh, so you can kind of see how much uh, load you're putting on the device. This can do a little bit more than the regular single drive MyCloud. So uh, we'll step through some of those things. It also tells you how much capacity is free. Now, again, we have two terabytes free because we are mirroring one drive to the other. So if we use both of these drives as like a, a, a RAID 0 array where we're basically striping to both, uh, we can get a full four terabytes out of this device or you know, double whatever drives you put in. Uh, but because we're operating in the RAID 1 or the safer RAID mode, uh, we have uh, less capacity but more redundancy. Um, and pretty much as you can see, just walking through here, it looks very similar to the original MyCloud. And again, I stepped through these menus in detail in that other video, so you can check that out. But uh, users, shares, everything uh, here is pretty much the same. Uh, where things get to be a little bit different is uh, not here in Cloud Access, but in backups. And uh, like the EX2, you have a lot more options for backing up the device, including sending the contents of the drive via the cloud or to the cloud uh, to the Amazon S3 services or Elephant Drive. So basically what you can do is set up an automatic backup that not only can go to the USB ports on the back to an external drive, but you can also send it off-site to Amazon or Elephant Drive. And that's a pretty handy little feature that, uh, again, is uh, unique to this product versus the, uh, the MyCloud on the consumer side. Again, the EX2 and the EX4 uh, both have these things uh, internally built in. Um, you can also do internal backups to other portions of the drive, so you can basically back up uh, within itself, and that might be useful if you have files that you know your family might edit and change or whatever. You can make safe copies just internally to, uh, to the device here. Uh, remote backups will go to another WD MyCloud mirror device, so you could uh, buy two of these, maybe set one up at a family member's house or maybe at the office and have the two of them uh, keep each other in sync with their backups, so that's pretty handy too. And of course, you can schedule your USB backup jobs, and we 
we've covered that feature quite a bit as well. Now, one thing this will do is uh, allow you to configure these drives in kind of a different way than it comes uh, standard. So right now, it's in as a RAID 1 array, which again is the mirroring, one drive copying to the other. Uh, but you can change this and try to get a better performance out of it. So what we're going to do is actually change to a different mode. And we have a couple of different options here. You have JBOD, which is called just a bunch of disks, where basically you have access to two drives on here versus uh, one volume. So for example, I could uh, set this up as JBOD and then have two two terabyte drives that I can, I can access independently on the device. Uh, we can also span, which would basically fill up one drive and then go to the other, and you basically get one large logical volume. So you get the full four terabytes. And again, it's not as safe as running in uh, that RAID, uh, the RAID, Z, uh, RAID 1 mode. Um, now, the RAID 0 configuration is uh, striping that gives you a lot more speed. In other words, uh, we're writing to uh, like almost as a stripe across both drives, and we're able to get the full four terabytes and also get the maximum performance that uh, we can squeak out of this. And for our benchmark, we're going to try that out. So I'm going to actually switch to this mode right now. I'm going to click on this. Now, when you do switch these RAID modes, this is destructive. So what it's going to do is basically wipe out whatever we have on the drive. And thankfully, at the moment, we have nothing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and switch this into a RAID 0 mode. And as you can see, we now have almost 4 terabytes available because uh, we are basically getting rid of that redundancy and going for the performance. So we're going to let this partition real quick. And uh, when it's done, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep going looking at all the different features. OK, our drive is done formatting. We've got our 4 terabytes now. And it's on this screen that really I see the biggest difference between the EX2 and the mirror. This drive does not have the iSCSI capabilities that the EX2 and the EX4 have. And what iSCSI is is a, basically a protocol that allows you to connect to the drive like it's an internal local disk. And there's a driver for the Mac, and there's this capability built into Windows. And it's something that you're, you, you would use in like a, a, probably a higher end environment than you might uh, with a product like this. And I really don't think it's all that necessary. So if it is that important to you, then spend the extra $40 to get uh, the iSCSI capability. But if it's not, uh, this will be probably just fine. And you can see my video that I did on iSCSI and exactly how it works. But again, in a nutshell, it allows you to connect over the network to this device like it would be an internal drive. So if you have some, you know, something that needs that kind of capability, then the EX2 might be the better choice for this. But otherwise, that's pretty much the only major difference that I uh, could see with this. And now, what this has that the single drive MyCloud doesn't are apps. And there's four that are built in. So you can download this little HTTP downloader. So if you have a, a big file somewhere on the web that you want to download directly to the drive, uh, you can go and grab that. Uh, you can also set this to be a recurring thing where it goes out uh, every so often and grabs those same files again. So you know, what could you use this for? Maybe if you've got you know, like a web server on, on the internet that you're backing up and you want to grab those files off that server, you could set it to an interval that it always goes out and looks for those files and downloads them to the drive. So that's a kind of a handy little feature to have. There's also an FTP client. And again, you can set this to uh, recurring. So you can go and grab those files every time uh, something is there. You can also grab an entire folder, which is very useful. So uh, that's a neat little feature. P2P allows you to uh, basically turn this into a little BitTorrent client. So use it, uh, use it legally, of course. But you can do uh, BitTorrent built right in. And there's also a web file viewer. So you can browse the contents of the drive just via this, uh, this client here. Uh, you can also install uh, web apps like WordPress and uh, PHPBB, which is a bulletin board system. You have Joomla, which is another uh, content management system. So a lot of little uh, web server based kind of things you can put on here because this is really a little Linux computer. It's got a web server. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM on board. So I wouldn't you know, use this to serve the world. But if you wanted to have a little development machine where you can mess around with WordPress or maybe have a few friends uh, talking to each other with a private bulletin board system, this could certainly uh, fit the bill for that. So a uh, pretty useful thing to check out there. Um, within the uh, settings screen, there's one other little feature. I think it's in the network section uh, that this does not have, that the EX2 does have, which is uh, support for Windows Active Directory and uh, Microsoft's Distributed File Service. So if those two things aren't important to you, uh, then no need to go buy the EX2 because those, the EX2 has 
uh, those two Microsoft features, uh, this does not. But again, if that's not important to you, then I think you're going to be fine with the mirror. Um, just some basic things you can do. You've got uh, FTP access, which you can turn on. That's also on the single drive system. Uh, SSH, which allows you to use a command line to log into the drive, basically to uh, use its, uh, its secure shell. You can do all that. Uh, dynamic DNS is here as well. And I think a lot of this is on the single drive unit um, too. So uh, you have those capabilities. But everything else is pretty much the same. You still have the DLNA server. Um, you have the ability to uh, do some system diagnostics, check the health of the drives and that sort of thing. So um, by and large, uh, this is uh, mirror, for, mirror for mirror, uh, the EX2, just again with only about four features that I could count missing. And it's a little bit more robust both in processor speed and in um, an, an available RAM than the single drive unit might have. So now what we're going to do though is see how fast it can transfer files on the network. So we're going to do a little performance check and see what that's all about. So we're running my favorite disk speed test from Blackmagic Design. This is used to measure the speed of drives for video capabilities. And we're getting some decent performance out of the drive, about 40 to 45 megabytes per second in write, and just under 100 megabytes per second, sometimes creeping over 100 megabytes per second in reads. And this is connected to a gigabit switch under my desk that my MacBook Pro is also connected to. And remember, we have this drive running right now in RAID 0, which is what we like to call scary RAID in that we're getting better performance because we're combining the speed of those two drives, uh, but we're also uh, losing the redundancy, which is why we have the full four terabytes. But this is kind of like the maximum amount of speed we can expect from the device, uh, which isn't bad. It's about double that of what I saw out of the single drive MyCloud. Now, when I was running this in the mirrored mode, I was seeing uh, speeds a little bit closer on the writes to the single drive MyCloud, about anywhere from 20 to 25 megabytes per second, uh, but I was still seeing really decent reads. And I would imagine that uh, those uh, mirrored writes are uh, taking a little bit of a toll on the processor, but still, I'm, I'm not disappointed with the performance. I'm not using this for video editing. I'm using this to move files around on my network. And uh, again, I think this will uh, work just fine. And it's about in line with other uh, devices in its price range. So that is the WD MyCloud Mirror. And if you're watching this, trying to figure out whether or not to go with the EX2 or this one, I think they're almost identical. The only thing this doesn't have that the EX2 does, at least what I've been able to see, uh, is the iSCSI feature and the Microsoft Active Directory stuff. Beyond that, it is the same product. It costs a little bit less. Same red hard drives built in, same processor, same amount of memory. Um, pretty much every feature set except the ones I just mentioned are in here. So that's a good thing. Uh, should you choose this over the single drive? And that's really a question for what you want to do. Uh, for greater data redundancy, this is certainly the better choice. It costs more money, of course, but uh, you have two drives. And every time you put a photo on here, it's being written across both of those drives. So if you have a drive failure on this one, it is less catastrophic because you can pull the bad drive out put a new one in and you're back in business. Uh, the single drive unit, which I use, uh, lacks that. So if the drive goes, your data goes, and if you're not keeping backups, and I do recommend you do that. Uh, this also offers a few more options on backups, uh, specifically the ability to back up to the cloud and the ability to back up to other uh, mirror devices. So you could basically buy two of these and have them back up to each other, either within the same network or over the internet, which is pretty cool too. Uh, both of these though, both the single drive and this mirror drive, have the ability to back up to external drives via USB. And I do highly recommend you do that as well, just to keep your data completely safe. So overall, I've really, you know, as you know, I've made a lot of videos on the MyCloud uh, product line. I really like them because they're very simple to use and set up. You don't have to have a working knowledge of file servers and Linux and everything else to get them up and running. They are really just very simple, almost turnkey, both in their, your, on your local network and also uh, accessing them from the cloud. So uh, check it out. This is the WD MyCloud Mirror, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.